Hey, what's up everyone? So today I thought I would make a video about what not to do and how not to shoot something for the grade. This intro intentionally left blank. I'm gonna go over a few different workflows, things that are kind of common, and really it just comes down to the fact that um, as a colorist for the past 10 years or so, I'm always surprised when someone comes to me with their film, they have maybe spent years even working on their movie, or project or, what, or whatever it might be. And I asked them, okay, you know, what look are you going for? Uh, what do you want your movie or your project to look like? And they have no answer. They're just kind of like deer in headlights. You can tell that they've never thought about it or they thought very little about it. Um, and so that's why I wanna make this video today to go over a few different workflows that you should not do and then also give a ton of recommendations of what you should do. So the first one is you write your movie or your project, you go out, you turn on your camera, you set it on auto, whether it's auto everything or auto white balance, you shoot on a camera profile, and then you edit your movie, you end up hiring a colorist, and then they ask you what you want to look like and you haven't thought about it. Um, so here's what's wrong with those different workflows. So the first one is that you set your camera to auto anything, um, especially white balance. And why is that not a good idea? It's because basically on auto, whatever, let's say white balance, if you're shooting, you know, let's say you're shooting handheld Let's say you're shooting outside or you're moving around. Maybe you lit your scene, maybe you didn't. Maybe you're shooting a natural light. Well, even if you did, sh if you are shooting under consistent lighting, a lot of times just by, you know, tweaking the lens, zooming in, switching out lenses, doing the smallest adjustment, um, the color temperature will change. Uh, but in a lot of situations, you know, you're, you're moving around and the color temperature is constantly changing or even worse, your exposure is constantly changing. Okay, this is obviously you know a tip um, for you know if you're just starting out. But I'm still surprised how many people go out and just turn on their camera and shoot like this. And then when you get to the grid, you have an image that's basically you know constantly moving, constantly changing, and that's where you get into the realm of you spend your entire color budget on color correction and not color grading, not on creating like a great look for your movie, but just fixing problems. And then you basically end up with a movie that looks okay, or just looks, you know, up to par, professional, whatever you want to call it, rather than something that looks great. I'll tell you something that a lot of your favorite movies don't do, which is another workflow that I'd say to avoid. All the movies that you've seen, your favorite movies, one thing they don't do is go out, shoot something, even if you shoot in log, per se. They don't go out and shoot in log, and then slap a LUT on it to get it to Rec. 709, and then slap another LUT on it for the look, tweak it, and then they're done. So that's another workflow I'd say to avoid. Don't do that. Don't go out, shoot, even if you shoot in log, then take your movie, apply a LUT for Rec. 709 to just you know take it out of log, and then apply another look or another filter or another look on top of that. Um, and then think that your movie's done, that it's graded, that it looks great. Um, without getting too deep into why you don't wanna do that besides just a creative choice, a creative decision, is that really a lot of times if you don't know exactly what that LUT's doing, what it's doing along in the pipeline, um, you're losing a lot of information, you might be crushing detail, you might be just honestly just ruining your image and then when you're exporting, you run into all these issues, uh, which is one of the reasons that you also do want to hire a colorist is because a colorist knows when to use a LUT, how to use a LUT, where in the chain and in the pipeline to use a LUT, um, rather than just you know sticking it on there you know without thinking about it and just hurting your image. So again, those are just some very common workflows. And now I want to get a little bit into how you do want to approach the look of your image. Um, you know, I could say this is, you know, the, the color, how to approach color grading, but really when it comes down to it, and you can, you know, pretty much ask anyone that's involved with the image, like the DP or cinematographer, 
how you do want to approach the image is from the very beginning. One of the things that I love as a colorist, even if you're grading this yourself, um, it doesn't matter, you know, if you have a huge budget, you can't blame it on people having more money than you, more resources than you. That's not the way you want to approach this. But like I was saying, the, what I love as a colorist is when I work on a project and they approach me and they have a lookbook, I can tell that they've thought about the look of the film from the beginning, not just on the cinematography and what camera they're gonna use and what lenses they're gonna use, but they think about the set dressing. You know, let's, you know, for example, say you want a movie that looks very uh, dark and gritty and, you know, I guess you could say cinematic. Um, well, if you want a very dark and gritty and moody look, then you might start with, say, dr set dressing, which is one of the things that I tell people the most. Uh, most frequently when they ask me, oh, what can I do to make my film look this way or that way? They're normally surprised when I bring up a set dressing and art department first, uh, because really that is a huge chunk, if not half of the look of your movie. So I would say, you know, put in old furniture, muted colors, you know, browns and grays and blacks and just, you know, dirty, uh, dirty walls and dirty, you know, cracked, broken stuff in the background. If you want a gritty, dark, moody film. And also don't, if you're looking for a dark movie, don't just, you know, shoot it in a bright, you know, to exaggerate it, don't shoot in a bright office with bright colors, reds and oranges and beautiful flowers and, you know, paintings with all these different colors. Believe it or not, I have a ton of situations where people do approach me and say, I want my, you know, movie to look super bright and vibrant and colorful and they name off all these different movies. And then I look at the footage or I look at a cut their, of their film and they basically shot, you know, in a beige room with, you know, the actors are all wearing white shirts and there's no color in it, no color in the set dressing and they want you to bring this vibrancy out of it. And at that point, you have very little to work with. You're really just working with skin tones to bring out any sort of color. And so keep that in mind, set dressing, wardrobe, all of those things, you know, what you might call the things that a lot of times uh, people who are shooting, don't think about as much. So think about wardrobe, think about set dressing. Um, and as I was saying, I love when they, you know, approach me to grade their film and I can see that, oh, the lookbook that they've created for me, which is another thing, if you don't create a lookbook, create a lookbook. They've created a lookbook for the look they're wanting. I look at their footage and the lookbook matches the footage they shot. It makes sense. All their images are, you know, dark and gritty and low key. And then their footage is the same way. Their set dressing is the same way. The performances are the same way. The lighting is the same way. Even the lenses, cinematography, all that stuff is all working together. Compare that to, you know, a lot of times where it's the complete opposite. I can tell that there was no thought in wardrobe, no thought in set dressing. Um, even the lighting, they just kind of like threw up a, a light in a corner, bounced it up against the ceiling and it's splashing everywhere on everyone. Um, and you know, and they shot in log and they think that's basically all they need to do to get a great look in a project, a great look in a movie. Um, and you know, they find out that, oh, okay, once you take it out of log and you see what you actually shot that they've kind of painted themselves into a corner and their movie just have that much of a look to it. So to get to my third point, and this by no means is going to be an exhaustive list, detailed list of, you know, everything you need to do to make your movie look great, look amazing, look high end, look like, you know, a show you might watch on Netflix that you love that's in, you know, a magazine like American Cinematographer, for example. But the th last thing that I want to talk about is to have a color story. And so that's another thing that a lot of people don't really think about, they don't know about, and it's the thing, one of the things that separates the great high-end awesome looking movies to the ones that just look very, you know, that don't look like any, anything really, they look like someone turned on the camera, hit record and applied a LUT to it. Um, or at best maybe shot and log didn't, 
a kind of okay grade themselves, but there's not really anything that really stands out about the look of the project. Um, and so color story. What do I mean by color story? I'll just say something she's here. Let's say the movie's about, you know, um, someone was kidnapped and then someone's trying to rescue this person um, after they've been kidnapped. And let's say you want a to stay with a the theme, a dark and gritty um, uh, theme color-wise or look-wise, okay? And let's say you um, shot everything the way you're supposed to, so to speak. And so we start off at the beginning of the movie. Maybe it's, you know, a happy scene. There's, let's say, a family. They're in a park. They're having a good time. Well, you might say the color story is going to be that in that scene, everything is bright and colorful and warm, low contrast. You're shooting with certain types of lenses to make, you know, the image look uh, a little bit brighter and happier. And then as the movie gets darker and then maybe, you know, uh, someone gets kidnapped, you switch over and you say, okay, the scene where the person gets kidnapped, you're gonna go with higher contrast. You're gonna go with, you know, cooler, bluer tones, maybe some, you know, aqua, greenish, dingy, desaturated tones. And then it gets even darker. And maybe by the next scene where, you know, you think this person has been kidnapped is, is dead, um, we go with something that's almost completely desaturated, very, you know, high contrast. Maybe the blacks are totally crushed. Um, it's, you know, you might be, a, at the beach, the same beach or the same park or whatever that the movie started in, that before was bright and colorful, and it's the middle of the day and it's bright outside, and that scene is still really dark and still really, you know, gritty, and you you, you work that way. And then by the end, it's rescued, you bring the color back, and things get back to being like warm and, you know, low contrast and prettier. That is color stories. And you know, that was just a few scenes that I mentioned to you. So you want to think about your projects that way is what's the color story? What does the first scene look like? What does the next scene look like? What does this sequence look like? What is, you know, the last sequence in the movie? What, what do my daytime exteriors look like? What do my daytime interiors look like? What do my night scenes look like? What do they look like when this character's in, in a scene? What does it look like when that character's in a scene? It's all those little things, which what makes a good grade is not simply applying a look to everything or making everything look the same or applying a lot to something or, you know, trying to nail a, um, you know, teal and orange look, for example. What makes a movie or a project really stand out and be something that um, really works for the story not just making something look good, but really works for the story, is when you have all these little details that pile up, um, that, you know, what I always love as a colorist is when I grade a film and then the client, the DP, the director, whoever, comes into the room and watches it with me and they say something like, I don't know what you did to this, I don't know, you know, how you got there, but it looks amazing, I can't even explain what you did. And really that comes down to, a lot of little decisions in the image, shaping the image, um, having a color story. Um, and if you notice what I've talked about is pre-production, having a look at the beginning, having a lookbook, thinking about every aspect from performance to set dressing to wardrobe, to wardrobe to lighting, to lenses, to camera choice, locations, all of those things um, to, you know, then once you have I'd say 70 to 80% of your look or so before you even get to the color suite. Um, then at the end, you built in a color story into that and then the color is gonna help you accentuate what you have. And that's when you get to a project that looks great when you shot it and then the color helps it go to the next level to where it looks amazing, where it looks, you know, uh, like something that people talk about and something that works with the story and something that, you know, um, people remember. So that's basically a couple tips that I wanted to give you. Again, I just basically, you know, it's basically the tip of the iceberg. Um, I could keep going for an hour and talk about different things, maybe, you know, break down different movies, break down different shows, that kind of thing. So 
If you learned anything, if any of this stuck with you or sounded interesting or piqued your interest, let me know in the comments. Uh, let me know if there's anything else as a colorist that you want me to talk about. You know, the technical, the creative, the story. Let me know, subscribe, like, and like I have kind of said before, I'm going to keep making videos, just any topics that I want to talk about. Um, but again, if you want to see anything, let me know and I'll see you next time.